Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to yet another Destiny 2 video and today I am doing a full guide for the brand new Iron Banner questline. Now this is a quest that is taking people a very long time. Me personally, this took about 8 hours over the course of 2 days to complete and I was really struggling to find out what type of abilities, exotics and weapons I should be using for each individual quest set because it does ask you to do some pretty ridiculous things and it does take you a long time and so what I wanted to do with this video today is basically make you skip all of the stuff that I did and you basically know what to do going into this quest so that you don't waste any of your time. I'm hoping that this video will help you guys complete this quest in about five or six hours instead of spending you know eight nine ten hours on this quest. There's also a nice little cheese that you can do for the final quest step which will basically eliminate all the time on that step. So without further ado guys let's just get right into it. If this guide helps you in any way a like rating would be very much appreciated. So the very first thing that you're going to want to do is go ahead and pick up the quest from Lord Saladin. The first step reads, defeat enemies within Iron Banner. This is very simple. All you need to do is kill enemies. It doesn't matter if you get the final blow on them or not. Assists also count. You want to be using any weapon that is OP. The Lord of Wolves right now on PC is amazing, so use that. <sighs> Fuck my life. The last word, the Ace of Spades, Blast Furnace, our Recluse, Beloved, Ostringer any of those types of weapons will definitely do the job go in there with a fire team preferably and do not go in solo if you can avoid it because um you know there's a lot of teams in there that are kind of six stacking and they are just pub stomping people so you definitely want to try getting some teammates i would recommend going on the destiny 2 lfg on discord there's always people there that are down for not only pve stuff but also for pvp this step right here really shouldn't take you too much longer than about four or five games once you're done with that go over to lord saladin he will give you one armor piece and then you will be moving on to the next quest step and the next quest step reads capture zones with teammates power plays count for a lot more progress so for this one right here you're definitely going to want to have a fire team because you want to be coordinated to make this part go by as quickly as possible as soon as you spawn in you want to go right for the flag in front of you with all six fire team members the more fire team members that are on the flag the more progress you get once you're done capping a or c depending on where you spawn you then want to run to b as a fire team go ahead and kill three four people on the opposing team and once the coast is clear cap the flag with all the remaining players that are alive over at b flag again the more people that are on these flags the more progress you get you actually get the most progress though when you cap the third and final flag which gives you and your fire team the power play if you don't know what a power play is you basically need to cap all three zones and that will lock the zones and give you a power play where the other team you know can't cap a zone for about 15 20 seconds and you basically you know get a massive swing in your favor where you get a lot of kills a lot of points and everything's just rolling for you so when you do cap this third zone make sure you cap it with as many people as possible you can even get up to 25 percent just by capping this one third flag if you have six players on the flag so be very coordinated make sure you have a fire team here if not if you're doing this solo it will take you a little bit longer once you're done with that go to the tower and you will then get step three which requires melee kills grenade kills and super kills this part of the quest is probably going to take you the longest out of any other step so just kind of be prepared mentally for this right here doesn't matter what subclass you're on or what class you're on titan warlock or hunter make sure you complete the melees or the grenade first and don't focus too much on super kills because that will happen over time naturally as you're getting melee and grenade kills so on the warlock you're going to want to use the handheld supernova for grenades it's obvious that that is super super op you can one shot people so make sure you have that on for your grenades if you're on the hunter you want to run the bottom tree arc strider with combat meditation you then want to run a arc bolt grenade with lucky raspberry exotic chest piece that's going to give you a stronger arc bolt and it'll actually have a chance at recharging your entire grenade depending on how many 
many people you damage with your arc bolt so that is the exotic you want and one pro tip that is a super awesome cheese is if you have the recluse go up to a wall when you have no grenade and energy and shoot the wall in front of you make sure you hit yourself and get yourself to low hp and what that will do is actually bring you down to low health combat meditation will kick in because of the bottom tree arc strider and your grenade will start to charge extremely quickly once you shoot yourself two times and get yourself low with the recluse against the wall you will get your entire grenade back within like 15 20 seconds and you just have tons of grenades to throw if you are on the titan make sure you're using either lightning grenades or maybe even flashbangs it really depends on your playstyle. but you have to run the armamentarium which gives you two grenade charges slapping on some paragon mods regardless of what class you're on is also recommended make sure you try getting somebody weak before you throw a grenade especially if you are using the arc bolt a strategy that i deployed is getting two shots off of the last word and then throwing a grenade at the ground in front of the person and that usually almost always resulted in me killing that person or trading with the person and that gave me a lot of grenade progress once you're done with the grenades move on to melees for melees you're going to want to run at least for hunter bottom tree arc strider with the liar's handshake which gives you cross counter punch this is a great great combo a lot of synergy here and you'll get yourself a lot of melee kills if you're on the titan you want to run synthoseps with the death from above animation looking melee i don't know the exact name of it but that's what you're going to want to go for and then if you're on the warlock make sure you run the ophidian aspects that increases your melee range and one melee in particular that i like a lot on the warlock is the stormcaller one because it seems like it has the most range out of all the other warlock melees you can do the same thing you know like you did with the grenades where you get two last word shots on somebody and then melee them up close once you're done with melee and grenade progress your super progress should basically be done you'll be popping your super you know in between matches just while you're playing regularly so you don't have to focus on this part too much if it's not completed then it'll be very close to completed so just go ahead and finish that off and go to lord saladin when you are done next step you have to get kills with scout rifles auto rifles snipers fusion rifles and swords for scout rifles and auto rifles you will need the most amount of kills compared to the other weapons mostly because the primary kinetic ammo is very abundant so it's easy to get kills with those weapons i would highly recommend the suros regime or the breakneck for the auto rifle and i would recommend the mita multi-tool for the scout rifle next up we have the sniper kills as well as the fusion rifle kills i would recommend any sniper you're comfortable with like the beloved the revoker twilight oath fate cries foul it really depends on your play style and then of course for the fusion rifle i would definitely recommend using the air until or the uh, wizened rebuke which is the iron banner fusion rifle both of those are very good and can kill from very far distances you will not need as many kills as you do with the scout rifle and auto rifle for these two weapons right here and then finally we have swords you're only going to need about 10 to 15 kills for the sword so do not panic it won't take you too long i would definitely recommend using the black talon because that thing is deadly in crucible if you use a regular sword you're gonna have to play very sneaky and honestly it doesn't work that well in iron banner because people are always always looking at their radar and calling out and playing smart overall so getting a sword kill and getting up close and personal is gonna be a bit difficult so use the black talent to save you time if you are rolling in a fire team this quest step right here will help you out so much you can have three Three players in your fire team running the Suros regime, the beloved sniper, and his sword, and you can have the other three people running the Mita multi tool and a fusion rifle with a sword. While the three people are completing their weapons, you're also going to be getting progress from your three fire team members because they're getting kills with the other weapons that you are not using. That is why having a fire team within basically this entire quest line is so vital. Again, try going on the Destiny 2 Discord LFG if you cannot find yourself a team. Once you're done with those kills, go over to Lord Saladin and he will give you the final quest step and this one you can luckily cheese. What it asks you to do is win Iron Banner matches and Iron Banner wins 
win streaks count for much more progress. What you're going to need to do to activate this cheese, ladies and gentlemen, is have a two win streak within Iron Banner. It doesn't have to specifically be Iron Banner for what I'm told. I think you can actually go into Iron Banner, win one match, and then go into the comp playlist, rumble, quick play, doesn't matter what, just win that game and then you'll have a two win streak. So once you have at least a two win streak within Crucible, all you need to do is launch up the tower and then once you see it say three, two, one, and the numbers and your HUD disappears and your ship is starting to load, go ahead and change characters. Once you change characters, go back and pick the same character that you just logged out of and you'll notice that you have progress on your quest and it'll start going up. Now do that five or six times and ladies and gentlemen, boom, you are now done with this quest step and ultimately the entire quest itself. Big shout out to Lucky for actually finding this out. I believe he was the very first one uh, on Twitter to post this and also on YouTube and that definitely is going to save the community a ton of time. So go ahead and go to Lord Saladin. He's going to give you the final armor piece that you're missing and then you can turn in all of your Iron Banner tokens that you've hopefully been saving for the past few seasons. Enhanced perks are dropping ladies and gentlemen on this armor. So turning in those tokens and trying to go for those god roll armor pieces is really the name of the game for this Iron Banner. This is the first time ever that, you know, Iron Banner or any vendor really is dropping enhanced perks, so please do not waste this opportunity and get yourself some maxed out armor. I would recommend not doing all three characters this Iron Banner, simply because the Lord of Wolves right now is pretty damn broken and very, very annoying. I think it's going to be patched in about two weeks from now. There's going to be an update in July where they actually address the Lord of Wolves. Luke Smith recently said this on Bungie's uh, Guardian Con St. Jude's charity stream, and so it will be patched in two weeks from now, so the next time the Iron Banner comes around, you can finish off your second and third character when the Crucible is in a much better spot in terms of its sandbox. That is it for the video though guys. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I hope it helped you out. I know that this quest is pretty agonizing. A lot of people don't like it, but hopefully with the tips that I gave you guys, especially for you know the grenade kills, the melee kills, what exotics you should be using, what weapons you should be using, and the cheese at the end, hopefully that saves you guys at least a couple of hours. But anyways guys, that is it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. If this helped you out or if you enjoyed, drop a like as it supports the channel. Subscribe for more daily death Destiny 2 content. And by the way, I'm going to be double uploading today. There will be another video today of me basically opening up a ton of packages and Iron Banner, you know, loot. And I'm going to be trying to get a lot of God Roll armor on my Hunter because I just finished off this quest. I have about a thousand tokens and that translates to 50 packages. So make sure you guys check that out. That'll be dropping later today in the evening. And I hope you guys have yourselves a great day. Peace.